one of the hallmarks of a classical tradition of music in our context I mentioned is the presence of a textual tradition of technical writing about the music. And um, we do have such a tradition for classical music, for Hindustani music, um, which has texts in Sanskrit, Persian, Arabic and other regional languages. These texts describe the music, the kinds of composition or other musical components, how music is organized into notes, etc. Um, they are also prescriptive, you know, they, they talk about what makes for a good singer or a bad singer. Um, for some reason, 10 is a favored number and uh, we have 10 features of ragas or 10 vital elements of tala, 10 good qualities of a singer or 10 bad ones and so on. This is I am talking about some texts. Um, now these texts are the source of our understanding of how our present uh, musical traditions have evolved. Um, and these texts are also a source of musical concepts of uh, understanding the musical concepts that we employ today. And they help us situate our understanding of this music in a uh, historical context. In this video, there will be a very brief survey of a few important texts and writers that uh, you will hear about in this course from ancient to contemporary times. The Sanskrit texts called Lakshana Granthas spanning two millennia contain descriptions and prescriptions of music of their times. Early texts uh, discuss dance too since song, dance and instruments were considered um, uh, a composite form, a composite performance form called Sangeeta. Sangeeta in today's language, to, uh, today's uh, usage, Sangeeta means just music, right? But in the early texts, it stands for this composite form that included song, dance and instrumental music. Um, an early and important text, very important text is the Natya Shastra, which is attributed to one Bharata Muni. And this is actually a manual for theatre. It is a magnificent treatise that goes into the details of every aspect of production and mounting of a play. Many aspects of our performing arts today still carry on with practices, prescriptions and the world view of that text. Rasa, for example, uh, is a very important idea that is first found in the Natya Shastra in the context of what the ultimate purpose of theatre is or should be. Nahi rasadrate kashit arthav pravartate that is Bharata in the Natya Shastra says that there is no meaning without rasa that is rasa is the ultimate goal of theatre. Um, what is rasa? Rasa is one of those untranslatable terms but it is something like the heightened emotive experience that we call uh, aesthetic experience today. In a casual way, rasa is also spoken of in the context of music of Raga Sangeet. But uh, there are problems here which we will go into later. Now the 20th chapter of Natya Shastra is concerned with music, uh, since music is a critical aspect of theatre uh, at that time. Two kinds of music are described in the text, ritualistic music or Gandharva, which is meant to please the gods and invoke their protection. And then you have the music that is used by the characters in the play, the songs that they sing or the music that plays during the as interludes and this is called Gana. Matanga Muni's Brihaddeshi of the 8th century describes regional musical styles. Uh, deshi means regional, uh, regional styles. O Brihad Deshi, it is a great work that talks about the regional styles and uh, in this text in fact we have what is the most famous definition of raga 
and the most most quoted definition of raga. The Sangeeta Ratnakara of uh, 12th century written by Sharangadeva who was of Kashmiri origin but settled in the Deccan is um, also a very famous text, it is an encyclopedic text and it is believed that this was written before the bif bifurcation into Carnatic and Hindustani music. And we will have some occasion to refer to this text too. Um, we have many texts after the 14th century and some of these like Sangeeta Damodara of Ahobala and Agavi Bodha of Somanath and many other texts are relevant uh, to understanding some of the aspects of today's performance. In modern times, uh, 20th century onwards, uh, we have writings in English, Hindi and uh, regional languages notably in Marathi and Bangla. Among these, the most important as far as its impact on the world of performance goes is the series of books by Pandit Vishnu Narayan Bhat Khande. He consolidated, organized and offered a clear theory with the intent of streamlining practice. And he also published hundreds of compositions that he collected from hereditary musicians who were for most part unwilling to part with them. He notated these compositions and all this at a great personal cost. He along with uh, Pandit Vishnu Digambar Paluskar were two visionaries and reformists who helped Hindustani music enter into the brave new world of modern India as this music transitioned from courtly to public patronage. Pandit Vaman Rao Deshpande uh, wrote has been a very influential writer and uh, perhaps his most uh, important contribution is his theory of uh, gharana that is what makes for stylistic differences in khayal. Pandit Bhavan Rao Haldankar has also written about the same uh, issue and has in fact uh, written in some kind of a uh, a critique of Vaman Rao Deshpande's uh, suggestions and theory. Dr. Ashok Ranade is an eminent musicologist whom I have already referred to and he has uh, written about many many aspects of uh, the performance world. Western scholars too have contributed significantly to the historical, socio-cultural and aesthetic analyses of this music. While this course is basic is based mainly on practice and all of us presenting this course are musicians first and foremost we do draw upon theoretical writings such as those mentioned above. 